I just <laughs> slob <laughs> echo. You guys probably don't even hear the echo, so I'm just screaming at you. Yeah. Hey, welcome to the camera department. It's Tuesday. We're tired. Already shot. Yeah, we shot this morning. Maddie B showed up with some beer. So if you bring beer, you have to be on the show. That's Maddie the rule. B brought glasses. Brought the glasses. <laughs> yeah, he actually just brought glasses. Brought the beer a few months ago. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Very true. Yeah, today on the show, I don't have any footage to show because we haven't been cleared to show anything. <laughs> that was a lot of shows. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't have anything that I can visibly put out there yet. Uh, we're in the process of that. We're in a lot of post stuff. So we're basically going to do what we do and we don't have content, which is an Ask Us Almost Anything episode. And by anything, I mean anything. Well, not anything. But pretty much anything. Almost anything. Almost anything. I mean, there's some things I can't. Ask, but yeah, you right. can't ask, right. but oh, production hub. It keeps popping up in front of my pop chat while I'm trying to. Make it. Just it's Mac. I just it I don't know. Mac. Does Windows have annoying plop up? Plop oh, up way things? more so than we do. So we're just talking and uh, just you know, just working. That's what we're doing mm -hmm. today. Just working hard. We went to a shoot that got rained out, but not really. Kind of, sort of. I think it rained out. Well, I mean, it rained during the audio. You have to just eat it. it. Did. Sure. Nothing you can do about it. Yeah. I First time I've had on a shoot in a long time where the subject <laughs> of the shoot was like, he turned to me. I was like, well, I'd love to just uh, you maybe get some B-roll of you just doing the stuff that you do. And he turns and is like, I'm done being on camera for today. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? There's nothing you He's can do. Yeah. You're just like, yes, sir. All right. So then we broke Talk out a Dana that. dolly and just shot random objects with yep. a Dana dolly. I was like, glad we brought this Dana in the rain, holding these giant lightning <laughs> rods like knuckle turds. But it happens. Things happen. That's the point of production. You just got to make things happen. I saw a lot of people. Uh, I don't visit much the GH5 forums, not out of anything more than I'd like to enjoy my life. And they're, True. They seem to be the Moss Eisley of, of Facebook. Actually, <laughs> Facebook is Moss Eisley, and they're Dr. Kevorkian. Ka What's his name? Ponda Baba? And the other guy, Dr. Dr. Evazon. Evazon. Yeah. Yeah, that's basically the GH5 user groups are Ponda Baba and Dr. Evazon. So I'm going to be Obi-Wan Kenobi and cut those effing arms off. Where's my no button? Oh, my God, I've lost the no button. Oh, yeah, by the way, we cleaned the office. I <laughs> drew clean this side. Oh. I clean, I, I clean the other side, but it's already messing in. We have clients coming in. We do have. I wish I could live stream in. the clients coming in. If it was one of our other clients, they'd probably let me, but this client probably not going to. Uh, let's yeah. see what else. What's been? Maddie's got a job. Yeah, I'm going back to Huntsville. Yeah. I'm gonna be a AC on a reality show for about two months. That's good. That's good, Rowan. Yeah. Is it about cowboys? I have no idea what it's about. It's not really your place to know. It's a reality show. Not yet, yeah. Maybe it'll be uh, something good. Hopefully. We'll see. Something entertaining. It was the same DP from the last reality show that I did here in Mobile. The Cowboy Way? No. The dance team one. Ah, oh, Prince know. and Elite. Yeah. Uh, so, same DP called me the other day and asked if I wanted to do it. I like, yeah, I got nothing else going on. No, it's good. I think you're going to end up more so in camera than you than you realize. I think we're going to move you out of locations, buddy. Yeah, I would like that. <laughs> we're, going to get, we're going to get you into the grind. So that means you can't do uh, you can't work for us. Uh, Saturday. Yeah. yeah when you leave? No, I, I leave. Uh, I think I leave either Friday or Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> That's so fun. That means I got to find some other knuckle turd to come in and do stuff. It's all right. It's going to be hot and miserable anyway. Yeah. So this episode is brought to you by a beer that's not present. It's not present yet because it's got to stay cold the last second. I thought you had it. I thought you said it has to stay cold the last second, and then Jeff walked kind of towards his office, and so he was, gonna be, he was sitting on his desk like a liar. No, it's actually sitting in the fridge. It's a special beer too. It is special beer. This is a very uh, special beer. No, uh, you probably see it right there. I'm behind over here. El Gordo. That's gonna be out of focus. El Gordo. That's probably in focus. El Gordo. Oh, it's an El Gordo barrel aged. God. 
what Imperial is this Stout. ABV? Uh, probably about 40. <laughs> no. We get it. Uh, I want to say it was probably about 12 or 13, though, when, yeah, it, I think when so. it came. And we've been sitting on it for a while. For a while. It's I think 2017 I that bottled. Back in January. Yeah. It yeah. just been bottled. So it's fresh. All right, so Maddie brought that, so we're going to pop it's an old Bordeaux. Fresh. And we're going to do uh, answer questions or just chat. Oh, there's. Hopefully. We have questions. Oh, good. Questions. We love questions. Let's yeah. go. Question number one. Do that while I am. Okay. okay. It's the first question, and my <laughs> answer is. Linus is here. Good to see you, Linus. Same here. About time for another live stream. All right. Good to see you guys. Welcome back. NVIDIA 1080 GTX for gaming or wait wait for the 1180 next month? That's a Jeff uh, question. Yeah. I don't actually know much about the 1180. Uh, the GT. Uh, I had a titanium that worked very well. Uh, I had it shipped through the United States Post Office. Please do not ship cards through the United States Post Office. Uh, it got sent to Nebraska, I think, and I never saw it again. So, uh, but it's a great card. 1080s is an excellent card, but the 1180 I don't know much about. So, you could wait. I know a 1080 will run DaVinci full full force 4K, full res, red, uh, without any problem. Somewhere. So, uh, Stephen Yuseda, if I said that right, sorry if I didn't, uh, but Stephen, you, Stephen Yu, asks, uh, I wanted to ask if you have used the y'all, thank you for using y'all, which by the way is the most gender appropriate term on the planet. Because no. you guys, nah, I can't say you guys, That's that's got a uh, What about to... Zal? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm done with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so done with you. Uh, use the variable frame rate on the GH5, GH5S. I keep getting crazy horizontal noise and can't figure out what to do. In good lighting, ISO 100 kind of situations. Oh, I've actually never noticed any horizontal noise. Um, I haven't either. Yeah, that's not something that we've come across regularly. I was going to see, maybe, maybe I can dig around and try and remember where we have some. VFR stuff. I mean, the only thing I know of is that red versus GH5 high speed stuff. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much straight from camera. That's an old YouTube episode. You can go dig that up and see. But I haven't personally seen it. That almost sounds like what lens are you using? Could it be something involved in that way? We'll do a test at some point. Maybe we can do a test and figure it out um, with you. I assume um, on the variable frame rate stuff, you're switching it down to 1080. I know we've done some. We did some on, on yeah, um, we switched down to 1080. the sailboat stuff. Yep. We shot a whole bunch of stuff. So, I don't know. Steven, I'll dig around. I'll see if I can find some of that footage and we'll play it, see if you can point yeah. it out and that stuff. And maybe we I mean, just weirdly, don't know what we're talking it about. could be uh, setting your ISO so low with a sensor that's rated for a higher ISO. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe so. Yeah. Uh, let's see, uh, Trev asks, now that everyone his brother has a gimbal, what is the newest, coolest tech you've seen that can make a difference? Honestly, um, better grade LED lights are my biggest thing that I think make a big difference. Somebody said lighting is a joke, but I think lighting does. Mm -hmm. I actually think it's time to go back analog. Uh, we were looking at some footage that someone had a Dana Dolly on, and they didn't use the Dana Dolly, in my opinion, the way it should be used at all. Um, we've shown some of that before where we we had like parallax turns and all kinds of stuff. It, it they're, they're better used, so it's almost an analog device. So I think if I were a lot of people, coolest tech-wise, I'd actually go back to analog sort of uh, taking the gimmicks out of it because I, I've found that everyone that uses a gimmick, whether it's one of those Batman overhead hook gimmicks or a Ronin or a mm -hmm. Crane, they, they depend on them so much that after a while they become a crutch. No, they don't. So, I think it would be going analog, like go backwards and get like the most basic non-electronic-y stuff. Um, <laughs> MPEG works for USPS. MPEG, can you please buy Jeff's card? Oh my god. It is totally yes, lost. Please. As he trashed you. I uh, did. Brilliant. Uh, John McCabe, so I had a second shooter use a C200 RAW and it was super noisy, kind of crappy, even after grade. Is it exposed to the right issue, maybe? Uh, just asking. Uh, I've shot a lot of C100. I've not shot C200. I've never shot I'm, C200. I imagine it's the same thing. If it is not exposed correctly, I don't subscribe to uh, ETTR. If it's not exposed correctly, then um, I did find it personally noisy. Actually, less noisy, though, than Sony stuff. I can't stand Sony stuff. I'm looking at it again. I got more footage from the Sony job. Well, you have more Sony I just, stuff. It's not wrong. I just not my favorite. Yeah. And it's all 2997, which I can't stand. There's not no all reason. Of it. To. There's a couple of 59.96s. Yeah. 9.6s? Not 7. Not 8s. <laughs> not 4s. 
There's so many different ones. Whatever. I haven't even started drinking my beer yet. You you are you are officially a member of the Panasonic group with fifty nine nine six. <laughs> yup. I'll take it. Um uh, we use y'all here in South Texas. All right, good. Good to know, Steven. Yep. It's a good word. Use. use. Yeah, use works. Yeah. The Utes. Yens. Dennis Yens. Schmitz, 1080 Ti 4K. plus 4K. Oh, yeah. you're just talking about. Um, uh, struggle, take off neat, and it probably won't struggle as much. Yeah. Neat, neat and, and Da Vinci struggles yeah, hard. It's bad. That's where we get a lot of those wacky frame issues. So, Stephen, you said is saying that the, he's finding the noise on 240. Okay, well, I don't take mine up to 240. The highest I ever go is 120. I'll have to do a test at 240 and see yeah, if I really can. Yeah, we really haven't. We don't. Fives. We just don't. That's just yeah. not a frame rate. It's too slow for me. The only time would be with strobe issues, but we've never had to go that direction with strobe issues. Yeah. Um, cheers. I made it. Peter. Clark! Welcome back, Clark. Neat is a beast. If you're using Neat, um, I think you, you really much you should pretty much have Neat as a primary gimmick in your kit, pretty much for anything you do. I finally I yeah. went ahead and bought you buy it, and you yeah, shoot yeah. on a Canon, right? Yeah, Canon T3i, the classic. <laughs> yeah, I just gave one of those to Georgia because we had a bunch of them lying around. We've told the story, right, about shooting in a U. Have you ever heard this story? Mm. You've never heard this story? Oh, I must no, illustrate no, with paper done it twice. Yeah. All right. We worked on a movie. This is a true story. The first movie that I ever uh, directed... Well, let's start with the first DP'd movie. The first feature film... Well, second feature film I ever DP'd. All right? This, I'm going to show you the layout here. Right? So here is the actor. Uh, this will be hard. This is actor A and this is actor B. Right? So normally you might do some cross coverage with like mm. a camera over here, or whatever. But that's not how ours was set up. We literally, this is the 180 degree line, right? Everybody know that 180 degree rule. Well, it should go through them, but whatever. Mm -hmm. For sakes of this, I'm writing upside down. Yeah. We literally <laughs> had eight cameras. See, <laughs> you have a camera, <coughs> a camera, a camera, a camera. It would be camera, between six and seven. Camera, a camera. Yeah. All filming at the same time. All filming yeah. this dialogue scene. So this <laughs> camera, should be that camera. This camera. Yeah. camera. This camera. This camera was okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. This was the epic wide shot that was this wide so the boom operator couldn't even get into <laughs> yeah. it. And then this camera was okay. So these two cameras were worthless. Other, yeah. All at the same time. Yeah. Every single setup, we'd have seven, eight cameras. What was yeah. the purpose of that? Just That's how the director wanted okay. it done. And then when the second movie came along, they imposed that same thing. So at one point... As the executive <coughs> producer. So. Yeah. But there was no monitoring. These are all Canon T3Is. So you can shoot a feature on a T3I. Yeah. We've shot mm -hmm. two of them on T3Is. One of them will never see the light of day. The other one... <laughs> the other one unfortunately did. <laughs> raided by the West LA Times. <laughs> oh, no. so Have you seen that one? Uh, Skyhook? Have you ever seen it? Uh, oh, it's so terrible. Yeah. Skyhook. I don't think you I don't have. remember which one I saw. I saw Phoenix. One, did Phoenix cause you to feel like you're going to have a seizure? Uh, did it have sloth so. footage in it? I don't think so. I don't uh, remember. There was, a, there was a boat. That's Sons. That's Sons. Okay. Sons is a way. Like, way better. Two. So <laughs> I never, I never Even saw Phoenix. So we were shooting eight cameras at one time on T3Is, and we had a Canon. We, had, we rented CP2s for the first one. No, no, no. We used, we used local lenses. Like, we used, like... Mm -hmm. Just regular old Canon glass, like mm. the the kit lens. Yeah. And oh, wow. I, yeah. And plastic eighteen to fifty five. Yep. And a seventy <laughs> to two hundred. So you went from like the lowest end glass <laughs> to the highest end. And then the second film we had CP twos. <clears throat> we rented CP twos on the second movie, and that's where Jeff Etheridge, the story Drop, of Melissa dropping a lens, lens. That's where he dropped the eighty five and broke the uh, the glass didn't break, but he he bent the the gear housing on the inside, so the mm. lens was dead. luckily it was a rental. Um, Lensrolls.com. I've been with them that long. That was almost yeah. that was mm -hmm. almost ten years ago. Yeah. Good God. That's what I was saying earlier today. Holy smokes. Yeah. So uh, so that one, um, it did not get distribution in the states, which is rightfully so. It did get distributed <laughs> um, overseas, and they made up reviews. The distributor made up reviews. Oh, one wow. of them being four stars. <laughs> the visual effects are amazing, which they are terrible. <laughs> Four stars, amazing visual effects. The West LA Times. It doesn't exist. Doesn't exist. There is no West LA Times. But we got a four star That's review. That's some Tommy Wiseau stuff right there. <laughs> it totally was. <laughs> that movie's as bad as the room. 
I'd no. like to see. Do you still do you still have copies of these? Yeah, I'd over like there. To, I'd like to. The uh, one that you you can only watch in this room, and we have to be super drunk, <laughs> is the very first movie. Gotcha. Not Sky. And then it becomes a drinking game as well. <laughs> yeah. So you'll come out really drunk. Yeah, you can't make it through. Excited. Yeah, you're not going to make it through two months from now. Yeah. So we in reality, that, we if did. If we do that, though, we will be able to have an art director come show up because he's been dying to do that forever. Who? Mark Terry. He's been oh, dying yeah, he's to come to one, again, yeah. watch that and yeah. play a drinking game. Out. Yeah. He's the one that invented the drinking game for that. Movie, yeah, actually. it's pretty bad. So, anyway, long story short, you can, A, shoot on that, but we shot on T3Is. I think mm -hmm. they're good little cameras yeah. for 1080p. They actually are. I think I like a T3I in some ways. I think the sensor on it looks fantastic. Um, but. I always had Neat with it. We had to run everything we did through yeah. Neat. That's also the movie in which Jeff, the first one was the movie in Jeff had to learn to color grade, mm -hmm. but it was not given to him in scenes or shots. Mm -hmm. It was given to him as the whole movie, and he had to oh, buy... Oh, no. <laughs> whole movie he had to was buy a, a, a oval, he had a vignette. like hard vignette <laughs> already like, built oh. into it from the It VFX was like guy. this. I'm not kidding. Like I'm serious. Like If you guys have seen some bad stuff, I, I wish I could show this to you. It was like this. Here's the scene. I'll just write it. <laughs> and then this is just like shadow. <laughs> oh yeah, that's shadow. It was that much on the screen. And yeah, so Jeff had to fix the shadow. Had to figure so out how to make to reverse, a vignette and reverse a vignette. And and off of that. So it was softer, but it was one long movie. And the camp, it already had the effects built in. So everything uh -huh. was baked in. So Jeff's just like, Jeez. I don't... Uh, so that's why I, I Jeff's skill on Da Vinci... Is the best. Yeah, in the I world learned a because, whole lot yeah, yeah. <laughs> very quickly. Yeah. All right. Sorry for the tangent. That's what we do on this kind of show. <laughs> yeah. What else you got? I forgot the camera was here. Oh. Uh -huh. There is the I never. Camera. I never remember. I only remember when I turned to address, and it's just out of habit. Any other questions? Uh, ever used an ASUS workflow? Neat video out. So good though. Uh, Neat video yes, out. Amazing. I've had to do ASUS workflow quite a few times. Uh, I got thrown deeply in the ASOS very quickly uh, with a master a master editor and a master assistant editor, if you want to call him that. Um, He's got like three Oscars. He's yeah. pretty much a master. ASOS, uh, ASOS, I think, is probably the best workflow for a feature, honestly, uh, all the way around. Just because it keeps color They just need to update it though, because now there's they problems. There's yeah. frame issues. There's you're starting to get frame issues, and you start getting uh, well, frame problems. sizing is starting yeah. to become an issue. And HDR now the, is becoming a major the HDR. Issue. That's what I was about to say. Yeah. On the delivery side of things, yep. has become really problematic. There's 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 too many standards that have become. Aces needs to update like 2.0 or whatever it is. They just need to update the level. Yeah, up they to make need it to a little more all inclusive. Keep it up with the times, and it'll beer. get there. But I can get um, like really trashed off of that beer. Yeah. It's yeah. danger. It's yeah. very dangerous beer. It's dangerous. It could be as far into it as you guys. Yeah. Not quite drunk an episode, but no, it, uh, it could fall off that horse. Yeah. What else we got? Uh, Dennis Schmidt said he was thinking about getting another license for After Effects, just and denoise everything before as a batch job. Uh, when I have, I I commented on this earlier, but whenever we do uh, jobs where I have a lot of it. I will render. I will take the After Effects noise reduce it and render it out as a DPX, and then bring it in and uh, kill grade off of that. It works better. We've done that in features uh, and commercial. Yeah, work. we've done it all. That's my normal way of doing heavy noise reduction. Yep. Uh, okay. Next one. Uh, ben, anybody have an opinion on the BenQ 4K HDR monitor? True 10 bit. Uh, I've heard of it, heard great reviews about it, but I have never actually seen it in practice. No, nah, I mean, so we're I still couldn't using really say much. What, we, what we've it. already paid for. So for us, it's yeah. a Sumo and, and, and a Shogun. Uh, and a Flanders. Uh, Matthew Bloomfield just got back into video, purchased, uh, purchasing a GH5 in the next few weeks, and have a few jobs lined up. Your videos are down to earth and practical. Thanks heaps from New Zealand. All right, we love yes. New Zealand. What part we of New do. Zealand are you in? Are you in uh, Wellington? Do you guys call it Welly? I don't know. <laughs> You're trying to sound like you've been there a lot. We just no, have I have a friend. Yeah, That's we have like, more than one friend. We have well, multiple friends. Well, technically, yeah, we do. Multiple friends. That's true. Yeah. That's a lot of friends. While we... Four. <laughs> Four friends <laughs> that I can think of. Four hey, in white people multiple. terms, that's a lot. <laughs> or five. Forgot about Carlos. I think he's still over in New Yeah, New he York. is, and Carlos is still there. All right. Uh, did a, a big movie. Uh, going, going to yep. back to the original, original movie that we were talking about. Thomas Donnelly? Donnelly? Might be 
but butchering that really bad. Uh, says so you're going to be screening this during fest. Yeah, we that, might. That actually that could be know. a fun. That could be. It matters on how drunk everybody gets through. <laughs> that, happens, it, that that's the only time I would be nervous <laughs> enough to be like by showing this. I'm going to discredit myself to know it. <laughs> yes. You will never, not that I'm like some celebrity level, but like it will literally be like, why did we pay this money to come to this thing? No, 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 no. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'd probably show it. I think I would. I think we have a DCP, maybe. Maybe it's just on DVDs somewhere. I don't know. That's That one's actually hard to find. I don't know if I even have, I still have a backup somewhere, I think. <clears throat> Yeah, well, they probably wiped my old backups. Yeah. I don't know. We may have lost that movie forever, thank God. No, they I'm pretty sure bad. that there's at least one... There's a DVD floating around somewhere. I'm pretty sure there's, there's a... whole a, stack of them. What happened to those? I don't know. I think I burned them. I'm pretty <laughs> sure that there's one sitting... I went sitting, Fahrenheit 451 on that shit. I would say there's a, there's a copy of it sitting in this yeah. building. Of all of our embarrassing work. That'd be pretty good. We would have to go to a different office, though. Yeah, to get it, but yeah. I, I bet you there's at least one. I throw it in there for fest. I definitely do it. What else we have there? Uh, Todd bought a his wife a T3i for stop motion. Oh yeah, it actually be a really good camera. It's a great for that. camera yeah. for it. Uh, <clears throat> problems with Aces. Can you do Aces with HDR? As far as I know, the Aces that is in DaVinci, you cannot. Uh, if you were an amateur who got a GH5 before the 5S came out. Then find yourself shooting a lot of low light. Would you spend a G on the eighteen thirty five or save up for a five S? I would I save know, up for man. the five S actually. Well, it depends me. on. Let's if you're an amateur, yeah. are you not lighting stuff? Are you just shooting random nighttime exterior crap? Are you using a tripod? Because I mean, if you're an amateur, you're probably not. You probably don't have a rig that's probably don't. A, a good enough rig to like shoulder off of to shoot decent stuff with. So then chances are you're probably shooting it, you know, holding it like this or with an easy rig. My God. And that question is from an old favorite <laughs> amateur media group. Oh, good. Yeah. Um, it's been a while since got if, that question. If I were you, amateur media group, I, I personally think that I would probably just stick with the GH5 and buy a lens um, because you don't know... Like at this point, you're cha- you're kind of chasing technology, um, so I'd buy a lens because the lens won't change. So I'd probably buy a lens and a speed booster. That's a grand, and then go that route as opposed to buying a whole new camera. That's just me. Personally. I get it. I'm actually interested in this question too because going from the T3i, should I go GH5 or GH5s? Um, you shoot a lot of handheld, don't you? Yeah. See, the, so the biggest problem is, is that the GH5S, that stabilizer in the GH5 is fantastic. No, it's a, and when you get rid of it, if you're not I used to shooting that. handheld or have done a lot of it and know how to tripod... And but do I don't thing, have any stabilization with the T3i. You're using my argument with... Oh, that's true. There's none in yeah, there. Yeah. Uh, all right. If you're shooting a T3i, I would, I would say a GH5S. It, there's, it's a better workhorse, in my opinion. There's more, more variety. I really think so. Is that fair? Yeah. Uh, you're you're kind of using my argument about Georgia getting a camera against me, actually, and so it makes sense. Yeah. With the stabilizer. Yeah. Built in. Yeah. No. If yeah. you're a first time shooter, an early shooter. See, I was thinking about it then, yeah. not thinking about it now. Yeah. All right, cool. Questions again. Go back to when you were living at your parents and needed to make money. Say you have a GH5 and a gimbal and other basic gear. Who are the first video clients you try to get starting out? First, I'd sell the gimbal. <laughs> and buy a tripod. Step one. I, in a weird way, would agree with you. Nowadays, I think the gimbal. I mean, if, I'm assuming you a have a tripod. Is, I think a gimbal is overused nowadays. If you don't have a good tripod, then I would sell the gimbal and get a good tripod. Okay. I'm talking about like a decent thousand dollar tripod. Yeah, a good tripod. A good tripod, not a photo head tripod with the. T- with the yeah, yeah, I'll talk to you mm-hmm. about that later. Photo head tripod three with the three. <laughs> no. That is not for video. Stop. It's Stop not. what you're doing. The three point Sell nine. It. It's for photos. It it's is. not. I'm sure you can get great stuff, but there's things you can do. I think with a tripod, you're better off. Yeah. Uh, but, all right. But if I were doing that, what clients would I go after? Restaurants. 
restaurants always need videos. They're the easiest people to poach. And I would pitch them on not making a TV commercial because that is a tremendous waste of money for them. I would pitch them on social media content in which you go in and you shoot a bunch of really cool stuff for them social media wise. That's what I would put out first. Then I would find out if there's like any recording studios or record, anything to do with the music industry that's a fledgling business. I would go to them and see if they have anybody that might be interested in getting their recording session shot. Not a music video. Music videos are a waste of money. We covered this last week. Um, they're very uh, high, high energy, low yield. So I would go to the social media stuff where you can go in and just shoot a bunch of really pretty stuff. And if you screw some of it up, it's not the end of the world. That's what I would do. I would target mm -hmm. restaurants first. If you could find local bands who are willing to pay you for live video? Yeah, live video too. That yeah. works too. Just no music videos. None. You just they're they're unless you absolutely feel like you can you can do something. They just typically the profit margin on those for the labor is not worth it. Because it's going to consume more time than you want, and you're not going to make enough clients. So yeah, and that's what I did at my parents' house. I went out to restaurants and pitched restaurants, and that's what I, I targeted when then I. Then you started working at restaurants, <laughs> <laughs> and then that worked so well. I worked there. I bought in like Scientology. I said, "Will you pay me to make a video?" And they said, "No, but we'll pay you to wash dishes." Yeah. Okay. Same thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At that time. <clears throat> no, that's what we did. Is we we recorded live bands. Yeah. And then we. Um, That's how we I did, started my I photography stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good question. It's a really good it question. It really is. But I wouldn't get hung up on the gimbal. I'd have a better tripod. And he said, beautiful. Thanks a million. That's what I'm doing already. So I'll keep going. Yeah. And you just got to keep pushing. And the bigger catch is, is to slowly raise your rates after you can you can prove that you're worth that. So if you're charging, I don't know, a restaurant video, honestly, if you can get three to 500 bucks for, for that and then limit yourself to $50 an hour or, or less, um, if you can get three to 500 bucks for a restaurant, you're doing pretty good. And just look at it as a volume game. You're McDonald's. Your, your goal is to sell as many hamburgers as you can. Um, and the goal eventually for you should be to be a high-end five-star restaurant, like, you know, best restaurant in the world. People fly there, mm -hmm. get on a two-year waiting list just to eat there, and they pay an exorbitant amount of money. That's where you want to be because then you're guaranteed business for a long time. We're not. Me and Jeff are just above an Applebee's. <laughs> Is that fair? Yeah, I'm trying to think of what's just above that. <laughs> olive Garden? Like an Olive Garden, yeah. That's no, right. I don't want to be unlimited breadsticks. <laughs> I don't want to be unlimited toss my salad. I don't want to be in that space. <laughs> you're, uh, you're a Red Robin. Okay. Yeah, that's, Red that Robin. actually works. Red they Robin. They serve beer and unlimited Yum. french fries. And they have a catchy <laughs> jingle. Yeah. Unlimited french fries. You have to give something it's unlimited. Yeah. Unlimited strawberry iced, iced tea? Strawberry sweet tea? Something like that? <laughs> Yeah. You and your fruity teas. Oh, yeah. I love my fruity teas. You and your unlimiteds. Back <laughs> off my unlimiteds. <laughs> Get off my unlimiteds. If only Thanos knew mm -hmm. that, he wouldn't have wiped the point. Yeah, we can go back to Pizza Hut Buffet from yesterday. Hey, that's a true story, and it's valid. No, I know. Best Pizza Hut Buffet in America is, is in, it pizza in Joplin, it? Missouri. <laughs> Joplin? It wasn't even in Joplin. It was outside of Joplin. <laughs> But I can't remember the Is town. Is it attached to like a KFC or whatever? Yeah, more or less. Oh. No, but it was one of the old schools that was dank. Like when you walked in, it was like, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's so humid. <laughs> it's like a uh. nightclub. Where's the stripper pole? <laughs> it's a breadstick and a pepperoni. <laughs> <laughs> a naked pepperoni slides down the repeat. I don't know what that means. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, no. right, I told uh, you. Matthew is 90 minutes north of Wellington. Oh, there you go. In some place I'm not going to try... To pronounce. Yep. Uh, four friends in New Zealand, that's nothing to scoff at. That's more than him. He's just, <laughs> just kidding. He says he has at least five if he counts his wife. There you go. Uh, we have there friends there, is why we're asking. So, my, my business partner in the film side of stuff, him and his uh, partner lived there for, gosh, 10 years. They moved back to the States. Um, mm -hmm. She's from over there, so she's uh, a, a Kiwi, and then he's a, a dual citizenship. And they go back and forth, like, maybe once every two years just because of the flights and the lag time and all that stuff. And then we have a viewer on the show named Wawi, who's down that way, super talented filmmaker. He's in Wellington. You guys should link up. I don't know if Wawi's watching this, but Wawi, yeah. if you do, link up with who? Matthew Bloomfield. Matthew Bloomfield and Wawi should <laughs> chat because you guys can work together and help each other. Uh, Steven Uceda said, by the way, he purchased our LUTs from the website, and they work great on his GH5S vlog. Uh, thank you. And also, uh, I guess going back to that in a weird way, um, 
even though we don't really, I don't want to say pedal it, but we do kind of pedal it sometimes. Yeah. The 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 LUTs monetarily got to go back to yeah a friend of ours. So uh, yeah, when we started the LUT process, that whole LUT thing, we were doing that to raise some money at Christmas time for a friend of ours who their family found out very abruptly that she was diagnosed with leukemia. Leukemia. It's a very specific type, and I pardon me for not remembering. They went through treatment. They were separated d during Christmas. They have two little kids, two little boys. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the husband lived up in Birmingham with his wife in treatment, and then the kids had a separate Christmas. So we were giving them money from the LUT sales, and then she went into remission, which was amazing. Yep. Um, unfortunately, the leukemia just is back. Yep. Just got that yesterday. Just yesterday. Yesterday. Yeah. So uh, we're back on the hunt. So yep. you know anything you can do to help spread the word that it is back full gear. We may have to put out another video explaining that. Maybe add some more LUTs to the mix. Um, we'll try to update you. If, you know, if we if we update, we'll we'll tack them on normally. But we want to spread that out there because the, the money goes to them and they're going to need it uh, this time because she has to have a bone marrow transplant, yes, which does. means and Jonathan is staying here and yeah, and then her and husband can't the make kids, it up there, yeah. so um, she's going to be by herself. It's going to be a bigger struggle. Yeah, it's going to be a harder struggle. So yeah. we'd like to do something to at least help them out. Yep. And frankly, you get something out of it. So yeah. like that's the point. Is like you should get something out of it, not just like someone. Of, those things are great too. The ones that do the you buy tickets and you win like you know. Win a walk on roll in Star Wars. Mm -hmm. They're cool ideas, but yeah, this at least guarantees yeah. you some doodad if you need it. Or not. You can just donate. Yeah. I don't really care. Whatever you want to do. Exactly. Yep. So, uh, Trev asked that craft show, can we have an earnest discussion about this? The low light chasing has been going on for years, and generally I find low light is actually crap, low contrast, and terrible color. I actually completely agree. Uh, I think the low light chasing terrible. comes from a different thing, though, Trav. I think most of the low light comes from people not understanding lighting, not capable of physically doing the lighting, or uh, just don't give a shit. No! Yeah. That's what it comes down to. And we've talked about it before, but let me grab it. But yeah, low contrast is a big issue with it. Uh, because you're only using a certain amount of dynamic range out of any camera at that point. And the color gets knocked down big time because you're dealing with partial dynamic range. And Drew is back. Hold that. Doing something. Just hold it straight up like that. I don't know what oh. You already got the lights off. Yeah, you're Not right. that light. This light. I don't think that light goes off. Yeah, it is. Does it? Yep. I never see that light go off. How's that exposure? It's not the best, it's not the worst, but if we took it and maybe bounced it up here, right? So I'm going to turn this light off. Oh, so, it's going to be dark. Yep. Ooh, there well, we go. I'm exposed. Yeah, so there's no lights on at all. And then there we are with a light, light on. Look, I have two of these. And, ooh, you hear that weird high pitch uh -huh. noise? That's weird. I have two of these now, and you can see we've got a little bit of an exposure. I don't even know what the ISO has said on the camera. My point is, these are cheap, dinky lights that are amazing. They're not dinky. They're actually workhorses. These are those cat lights we've talked about. Look, we're literally using two of these, and we can light a scene. And if I needed to add, like, some spooky depth, I could do some spooky. Whoops. I could do some spooky depth underneath. From the great beyond of spookiness, right? That's these lights doing that stuff, just these. And they flare like champs. Look at that. They're pretty awesome flare mm -hmm. lights. So that's these two lights that are $30 a pop. And they're rechargeable. We've talked about this before. They're much better value. Can you hold that up? They're a much better value than anything else. And this is how the show is going to go from this point forward. I'm just kidding. All right, y'all just hold on then. But if we put a bounce over here, we'd probably get a little bit better kickback. You would. You can kind of see. Look. Look at the light. Uh -huh. See? 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 Using this. Yeah. Can you not do this? You can do this. And I don't know how much it would kick if it was just this. How's that look? I can see it. That's off yep. of a giant whiteboard. Look at that. Look at yeah. the difference. And that's what we're doing with the high line. Yeah. And this is $30 and the high line's 1000 Yeah. It's easy. All right. They are really cool lights, I'm big. 
Uh, they've helped us a lot. Uh, Impact did bring up a thing in this, uh, which is true for most for for a lot of people. Some situations will prevent you from adding additional light, like indoor sports and stuff like that. That's true. It's very true. You have to just kind of take that for what it's worth and not deal with it. My point is, is like from the low light side of things, you yeah. can light stuff. You can make things work in that way. You can rig stuff. Those again, these lights are. I think I got a two pack originally. And I gave one to my father-in-law. We kept one, and then the Kat nice sent us scent. lights. Yeah, and we even have a bigger one. The big one. Yeah, that'll light up this whole thing. But yeah. again, it's rechargeable. It We've talked about it. You have to plug that in. These are battery powered, so yeah. then I mean, they're good. The only other thing you need is, and it's cheap, parchment paper that you can get at the mm -hmm. grocery store or whatever you call it. Um, you might tape some parchment paper to soften it up a little bit more, and then mm -hmm. you have kind of more of a glowy lamp. Which gives and that's nice, going to cost you. It's a cheaper version of the thirty dollars and twenty cents. Uh huh. Like twenty cents yeah. of parchment paper. I mean, I it's just nothing. To parchment it. paper and uh, aluminum foil for a long time. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're fine. Diffusion and, and bells. Yeah. Yep. So I mean, there, there's works. ways to do it where you can light stuff around it. I think it's more a matter of uh, taking the five minutes to spend another thirty dollars and and taking the five minutes to learn how to use those even in the worst case scenario mm -hmm. um, we use them all the time they, they travel in our kit and I have no shame about using them I don't really care we have our fancy lights um, but at the end of the day if that's gonna do it and I can walk away from it and shape the light the way I want yeah it's fine by me yeah that's my biggest thing um, let's talk about fest for a minute or is there any is there more questions yeah, there's a couple more but we can talk well, about fest we, first. We can clear out those questions uh, mm -hmm. first one is uh, from Dennis. You're doing, you're doing DCPs by yourself or hire an external company. Thought about just exporting from Resolve directly so it can actually access the data before 709 conversion. Um, we don't use the DCP Easy DCP out of Resolve. You still have to pay for it, um, and it's a decently. It can be a decently hefty price tag. Uh, yeah. We, I think the cheap end is a thousand bucks. If I were doing DCPs um, for something that mattered from a business perspective, yeah, I would hire an external. Company I would hire to do an it. external company to do it. Yep. Yeah, hundred percent. They can't change your photo. You might just make sure you kick out a four 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 as mm -hmm. your master. That's what most of them want anyway. Yeah, you don't have to do the JPEG two thousand and go through that whole process. Um, if not, there's free DCP tools that work just as good that literally convert a four four four. Yeah, a ProRes four 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 fairly well. Mm -hmm. um, we're still trying to figure out it, it doesn't flag 2020 as much as we'd like but we're figuring that out yeah. I think we've kind of got it solved um, but yeah you can and I think it's I mean it's where is it it's down here in my timeline yeah I don't remember which one you have I keep looking at hybrid yeah it's not hybrid I think it's DCP -O that's it that's it yep. that's the one most people use DCP o -Matic is free, and you just make a beautiful grade in DaVinci, kick out a 444, a 444, and then throw in the DCP o -Matic and boom, done. I wouldn't do it for professional delivery, but if you're showing something on a theater or a short film, um, I would go that route. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, Matthew Bloomfield, again, uh, plus one to the GH5 question. I have a good tripod looking, getting, looking at getting a gimbal. Should I go for the 5S, shooting commercial scenery and a few interviews for now? No. Yeah. Um, yeah, Keep I'd, your GH5 yeah. and buy some lights. <clears throat> That's what I would do. I mean, hundred percent buy some lights. Even if the those aperture or whatever those cheap Chinese ones are, buy those. Get some lights. Trust me. Aperture's you do way decent. more. Aperture's really good. But I have. I have I a they were the, cheap. They're relatively cheap. But, yeah. Uh, I mean, they're, it's kind of like the Hive. Aperture has some higher end lights. Yeah. yeah. A little pricey. Then there. I would look at the aperture lights. I would. I would buy a lighting kit first yeah. and foremost. Um, or I would then buy a good sound kit. That's the one thing that people just like yeah. throw to the wayside. It's like, if you're using you a GH5, I would get the the audio gimmick for the top of it before mm -hmm. I bought another camera, because mm -hmm. um, if you're doing interviews, the audio needs to be good. And then I'd buy a really good boom mic. Yeah, which has been our savior lately. Oh my gosh, this the new mic that we're using mm -hmm. is outstanding. Um, it's a new mic that we found that we had. Yeah. <laughs> It's an old mic. We had a 416, we just didn't but I know like we this mic so much better than a 416, it's not even funny. And so we have two. We have this mic that we're on now, which is an external mic, and you can see the audio levels on this have gotten way better since we started using this mic. Mm -hmm. And then we also have another one that's more what we call, an in, for us, it's I don't remember the model number, it's an interior mic that, I mean, it is pinpoint accurate, beautiful tone out of it. Um, it's not. It doesn't have too much low end. Some of our other mics have too much low end in it. 
So I would get an audio kit before I bought anything else if you're going to do interviews. And look, DocuStyle is the cheapest, easiest way to make money. Hands down. Period. Oh, yeah. Big time. Because it's, it's, it's only post time, really. The shoot yeah. is pretty simple. Yep. Uh, Ramsey Sanchez, uh, should you register your business as a solo LLC if you're starting out in video production? Um, I will tell you this. I, I'm not going to give full taxable advice. I can only tell you yeah. what I know. Um, and I've talked about it before, I think. I don't remember how much detail. So in 2016, I was not set up correctly. I was just set up as an LLC. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I had a good year. And the amount of money I paid in taxes it was... Oh, it was awful. Mm -hmm. I paid so much in taxes. Even though I had all these write-offs, I still paid... Guys, it was it was north of $20,000 in taxes. And so I paid a lot. And I had a good year. But I paid a lot in taxes. My accountant and I sat down and I formed Craft Show, LLC. And we structured mm -hmm. it as an S. Um, it's not an S Corp, but it's an LLC that files as an S. And I pay myself a, a small salary. Not much. I pay myself a small salary... And can pay these guys out of that, but they're 1099s. And the difference was this year I didn't pay hardly anything at all because my tax stuff was set up that I wasn't throwing everything into a hole. Mm -hmm. um, you get penalized currently by by being a small business that's not set up that way. So that's that. I would talk to an accountant, but my advice would be to do an LLC. The other side of this too is you need to make sure you're an LLC and determine who owns the assets in the LLC because if you were ever to make a mistake and get sued and you don't have production insurance, which some of you may or may not have, mm -hmm. then they're going to sue the LLC and take all those assets. So make sure that like your house isn't tied up in it. That's why I don't put cars in my LLC. Mm -hmm. The only thing in my LLC um, for craft show is a little bit of equipment. The majority yep. of it is actually held by another LLC that does not operate outside of that. Mm -hmm. so, there we go. Business. Yep. It's important, though. No, it's very important. From you doing that last year, I'm now an S. Yeah. Um, also, should I invest in some expensive SD cards to try 400 all I, or should I just buy some of the slower ones to have a larger capacity since I mainly just use 4K 150? That's from Amateur Media Group. I would actually invest in, in the slower ones if you're... Yeah, you don't need all doing, I. Yeah, if, you, you don't if you're it. not using all I, don't... You There's no reason to for it, it unless you're really going to be matching something. That's yeah. the only time I've ever seen it really, 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 really matter. MPEG asks if we can recommend a good tripod for the $15 to $20 range, preferably from Best Buy or Radio Shack. <laughs> I'd say go to Walmart. <laughs> that was well done. Yeah. Actually, you could have even thrown uh, the Amazon thing because that would have tied it into something. Oh, Dennis posted. actually, okay, he beat me to it. said Walmart bags if nothing's around. Yeah, that's it. Uh, it's look, look on Amazon for oh, one of the no, Amazon sure, day, sure. Prime Day deals. Yeah, right. It's almost over MPEG. or already over. I read your I read your Facebook posts, bro. I value your opinion. Uh, somebody Chief earlier, I can't find it engineering now. Engineering officer was asking if we use DaVinci Resolve. Yes, I, I use DaVinci Resolve ninety five percent of the time, yeah. and Scratch the other five percent. But that's hopefully changing some, and DaVinci will go down and Scratch will go up. All right, so let's talk about Fest. Is it all the questions? There's more questions, but I mean, we're, Dang. we're not going to answer all the questions. If you want us to answer your question, one, you can do the at craft show thing down yeah. there. So we see it in orange or yellow or whatever color it shows us. It's red. Red. Oh, orangey red. <laughs> I guess. You're a colorist. Yeah, it's an orangey don't, red. Don't be indecisive. It's, it's Clemson. I, I have to, it's, it's Clemson orange. All right, Clemson. That's fine. If you do at Craft Show, we'll see it in Clemson. And if not, then you can, uh, if you want to get our attention any other way, make sure you um, make sure you just, just see it. If we miss your question, I apologize. Yeah. Let's talk about Fest for one second. Matty, what do you think about Fest? I'm totally down for Fest. Matty's down with Fest. Mm -hmm. Jeff's down with Fest. Hill location scouting. <laughs> so I've talked to the theater, and they've agreed to to let us do fest here at the theater. Um, there's two things that have unfolded. One, they have like the big 4K laser uh, space that that they'll let us use off and on. We have to be careful how we do that because we basically are going to have to pay whatever movie studio movie they'd have. Mm -hmm. We have to pay for that space, so we want to use that very, very sparingly. But it also means, I think it'd be fun if like we did like shoots together 
that we would take those edits, make DCPs, and actually project them in there. Mm -hmm. um, they may not be perfect, but they'd be close enough for us to all see it on that. In the meanwhile, they actually have an uh, uh, upstairs. The, the rumor is they're converting upstairs into another theater that's just going to be a smaller, more like tables. So I think it'd be better for like giving presentations. If somebody wanted to talk about engineering stuff or if we want to talk about budgets or we're having little breakout groups or whatever, we can do those upstairs and have a, a lot more access to uh, a space where there's great Wi-Fi and then, you know, you've got your iPad, you can order as many drinks as you want and do all that stuff. Um, upstairs, I think that would be kind of cool. So I'm looking now and thinking, and this is a very realistic part of this, I, I think January, early January is going to be the better time to do this. And the reason why is I'm looking at my holiday schedule. Uh, if you have kids or you're in a family that might have that kind of relationship, mm -hmm. then um, that makes it kind of tricky during the holidays. Plus, money gets a little bit tighter for us, and we have to contribute into this yeah. as well. Yeah. So I'm thinking sometime in January. So whether someone buys it for you as a Christmas gift or whatever, we'll figure all that part out. But I'm thinking more early January. I don't know how that impacts people that – aren't freelance like we all kind of make our own schedule yeah. but somebody like uh, I'm not picking on you MPEG but somebody like MPEG who has a more traditional I think has a more traditional nine to five um, I don't know how that impacts you can you take the time off to be here um, I have had a conversation with certain individuals that I cannot say yet that would be pretty cool they've agreed softly agreed to be here for at least a day to have conversations about their products and we'll leave that for what it is. Um, but that's pretty exciting um, because they got excited by the idea that it wasn't just, it's not a massive marketing pitch. It was more just a conversation mm -hmm. and how we can all make each other better mm -hmm. filmmakers or commercial makers or videographers or whatever you call yourself. Um, and then we talked, I talked to another guy who called me, who's a friend of the show. Uh, what's up? Uh, <laughs> What do we used to call? Oh, I won't say that. One. Never mind. Um, it wasn't racist, maybe, but it's fine. He's okay with it. <laughs> this has just gone down a path of terribleness. Yeah, it has. No. Um, Sorry, yeah. Uh, so anyway, I talked to I talked to uh, our buddy audio engineer who was on board with helping us get PA or anything else we might need, and maybe we can get a little sponsorship out of them. So it looks like we can make everything line up. Yeah. It just needs to be intent. And we've talked about it. We're talking about it on a live stream. Everyone's like, yeah, let's do it. But I've got to put money where my mouth is and put out some kind of like, this is what we're going to do. We've got to get a curriculum together. I know that MPEG mentioned, he's our chief engineering officer. Uh, he's our head of technology. MPEG mentioned wanting to make sure that there was some technical level discussion. I think that's important. I think there should be budget discussion, like we talked about, where we break down budgets. I don't want to put them public on YouTube because that will get me maybe some embarrassment or frustration from clients, but I don't mind sharing it in this space. Yeah, and I can mock up some budgets. Uh, I talked to an agency exec, uh, the same guy who's brought us more of our highest end content. He agreed to come talk so that you, you would kind of understand the interface between a creative director and you if you get to that point in your career, which if you're just solely doing video, that's my, my you know, and you don't want clients, maybe that's what you want is just to work with agencies. Um, and there's more stuff that we've kind of lined up in that space. I think we talked about doing some shooting. Mm -hmm. I think it'd be super fun to go find yeah. some, some stuff to go film, yeah. break out mm -hmm. into teams and just go for it. Like I think that'd be amazing. 24 hour film yeah, film but like, film. yeah, just, you know, you prep and then we just go shoot. Like yeah. everybody has a time to go. So, you know, if your time's during the budget thing, we'll figure it out. But yeah. And then we, we lastly talked about to help drive the cost down. And this was the big thing is we're going to try and set, here's what we believe it's going to cost. And the number of people that pitch in, the, the higher the number of people coming or pitching in, the lower the cost becomes. Like it's mm -hmm. very communist in that way, <laughs> but it works, or socialist, I should say. And the idea here was that eventually we would create an online, even if it's just kind of broke ass, like a secret Facebook group, whatever it might be, but creating something like that where there's a portal where someone gets to pay and then you add them to the group and they can watch it via Facebook mm -hmm. or private YouTube or whatever. I don't fully know enough about all that stuff. Uh, but we would we would you know let people see some of the live streams yeah. um, or live stream all of the stuff if they pay a certain amount that will also help all of us in attendance drive the cost down. The goal is to get it cheap. I'm thinking it, I'm hoping we can make the whole thing work for like twenty dollars a day, so that'd be sixty dollars a head. I think we can pull that off, mm -hmm. including having some cool shit here. Yeah, right now. yeah, I think it'd be cool. 
Um, I've just got to drive the cost low enough to do that. It will be 100% in this city because I have the infrastructure of people that can help me and yeah. help Jeff and help Maddie and help Melissa do this and pull it off as a team. We have those people available. Um, so I think it's important that we keep keep it here for now. Mm -hmm. And it keeps the cost lower initially. And if it works, guys, I'm telling you right now, it'll blow up bigger and then it'll become like a thing. Uh, I want it to be a thing, not for financial yeah, gain. I want it to be, yeah. yeah, I want it to be a thing so we can go to other places and everybody, because mm -hmm. selfishly, <clears throat> I know for a fact that I will learn more in that environment than I will in the other environment. So I'm going to gain from it, mm -hmm. which means my business is going to gain from it, which means Craft Show gain from it. Not a YouTube channel. I'm talking about Craft Show, mm -hmm. the business, the one that pays my bills and Jeff's bills and sometimes Maddie's bills. Sometimes um, <laughs> I got paid so I can cut your check. Oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I think, I think it would be kind of interesting. I think we could grow it and eventually we'll just take over NAB. Because how fun would that be to have like a secret yeah. fest at NAB? Yeah. And I'm saying it's secret. Like you have to have like, I don't know, a challenge... A challenge coin or something. <laughs> so it's like if you're a fest member, it's like a weird cult. Yeah. I've been listening to a lot of Scientology lately. <laughs> Documentaries. <laughs> if you don't have this coin, Jeffrey, you can't be in the cult of fest. I won't be in the cult of, no, cult of fest. Well, I only have one of these coins, so I know. really no, and no I, I kinda like that one. <laughs> it's pretty rad. Yeah. Anyway. I don't know. Figure that out. Challenge coin, that'd be kinda fun. Yeah. It would be. You know what a challenge coin is? I do. I know you do. All right, that's the fast update. <laughs> that's multiples. where we are. We have fast. Uh, I'll have to get with you on that too because I, I might be able to pull in two people for the tech side of things. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh Bradley. One would be Bradley. Yes. Yeah, that'd be sick. That would be straight color tech because be he is very post production yeah. oriented. Yeah, um, but that's a time where. Do you want to learn about post, or do you want to go shoot your portion of the content, or whatever exactly. we're doing? Yeah. So, like, I think you have to make it where there's some overlap. Well, my thing is that The I downside was... is, like, you and I, and probably even you, maybe even Melissa, but there's some of us that are not going to be able to go to some of the things, because it's yeah. like, hey, let's go with them and yeah. do this, yeah, and shoot. we know the city, <laughs> and we know how to deal well, with it. Well, the other part that I was thinking of, too, is that uh, if I could bring him over, I could bring him and put him in that room for a little while for people. Oh, that'd be sick. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be super be sick. really sick. Yeah. I don't know if we're going to touch on HDR at Fest, though. Well, that is one spot that I can honestly say, thankfully, that I'm way better at no, no, than no, somebody but I'm else. Saying, I know. I, my but concern with it would be is like... He has we, no idea about that stuff. If then. we did HDR, like, yeah. I don't want to... Those, those projectors do HDR. I just don't know if it's the right thing. So I think no, that yeah. if we did HDR, it's going to be here. It'll yeah. be a YouTube component. No, yeah, I agree because in there it's it's more actually going twenty twenty. Yeah, in that space than right. HDR in that space. Right. No, they'll, they'll uh, go to it. And it's still the same same principle. Yeah, idea for it, but it is slightly different. Yeah, uh, but it'll be much easier, much quicker for us to be able to get twenty twenty going into there than right. HDR. Right. So, yeah, yeah. that's what because I saw out of the corner of my eye, MPEG said really question mark. But no, yeah. we're gonna do it. It's, it's, it's gonna be for, it's, it's gonna be YouTube and, HDR, right? And availability. Yeah, I think us. it'll be it'll be YouTube HDR yeah. and not theatrical HDR. I just don't think we're in a position to, to do that yet. Yes. We will get there. I promise. But we're just not there yet. Yeah. I see some some Clemson. There is. Uh, first one is Chris Monroe up here. Uh, let's say I edited a feature, rough edit, and I want to send it across country to a finish editor. What's the best workflow for that? I'm thinking of even back to the DIP dump stage. Um, uh, hold on. Before you answer, is the other yes. question fest related? I'd like to close this topic. No. Uh, yes. Okay. The newest one is. Yeah. Why not record all the talk speakers and upload them to a private group afterwards? Then people won't need to worry about messing it while off filming. Yeah, yeah, of course, it would be live, yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, it'd be live, and then we'd post it up there and let people have it. Yeah. We just got to figure out a way to, to monetize that so that it helps offset the cost so, of so doing all of it. Of it. Yes. It's not a matter of making money. It's about offsetting costs. That's the <clears throat> only thing we're looking at with Fest. Fest. Fest should never be... Now, if we brought in a speaker and we're paying a speaker money, that's different. But Fest should never be a money... It should not be making uh, about making mass capital. It should be about no. spreading yeah. information. It should it be... Should be. 
that nobody comes out of pocket, or if, it, if we all do come out of pocket, it's as cheap as possible. Like, that's the goal of Fest, is to make it that level. And if it gets to be a point where it has to be a business, that's a different conversation for a yeah. different day. But right now, I think we can socialize it and say, okay, here's a distribution. All right, so back to this other guy's question. I'm going to wrap up fast. We'll answer those questions, but I just wanted to make sure while we're still on topic. Yes. I'm going to jump off topic and answer this DP, this uh, this feature. To a finished editor. The best workflow for that. To a finishing editor. Yes. Like a colorist finishing editor, or is somebody going to monkey with your cuts? I think he's doing the. I think it's monkeying with cuts. Then I would XML it, and then put it on a hard drive, email the XML, throw the crap on a hard drive, and be done. I would XML it, but I would also contact your finishing editor and ask his opinion on how he likes to have his project set up. Oh, that's true. Because you're going to get charged for that if you're paying a finishing a, editor. You're going to get charged a DIP for that. From a DIP standpoint, yeah, yeah, or a DIT standpoint and from an assistant editor on a few movies talk to the finishing editor set the project up, project up exactly how he wants it and, and find out if they're working in a uh, offline program like yes. if they're doing if they're working if you're going premiere to avid yeah. or avid to premiere final cut seven yeah uh, i don't know many on x but if, if they're doing all of that then you want to make sure that's yeah i don't know many actual final cut x, so movies yeah. it's a piece of crap dude yeah. I need you to show me how to use it. <laughs> I only call it a piece of crap because I've never used it. I, see, I, I tried to use. Uh, but you started. I tried to use Premiere and I, I was clueless. Gotcha. Yeah, but it's like iMovie, dude. It's like iMovie, but it's got more buttons, more pro features. They're not pro. It doesn't let you do XMLs right. You have to run into a separate program to get an XML out of Final Cut X, unless yeah, that's can, changed. You can export an XML. Yeah, you can. No, it has to be converted. It? To open it in, in ones Avid that, or in, in Avid, maybe in DaVinci it's fine. Did you get the problem with the ones that I sent you from uh, that one edit? No, I didn't. Not in DaVinci. No, I went to Premiere with it. No, never yeah. mind. I stayed corrected. Didn't fix it. <laughs> uh, Chris Monroe, little... to go back to it, if, uh, if you are going between programs. X to uh, CC. I had to buy that. Mm -hmm. If you're going uh, from Premiere or Avid or whatever and you have questions on it, just uh, email me at jeff at craftshow.com and I'll try to help you out as much as I can. Yeah, Jeff does a lot of that. Um, yeah, that's what I used to do quite extensively. Uh, okay, at Craft Show, weird question. Do you know anybody still shooting film? Have you ever thought about it? Too much torture. Uh, for what we're doing... I shot film. <laughs> started out. For what we're the, doing, the too feature, much torture right now. The feature we just shot uh, content for was... Uh, shot on film, yeah. Was shot on film. Uh, yeah, there's people doing it. My friend of... My, the guy I was telling you was prepping Atlas uh, Anamorphics yeah. today. Is, there's a guy in Pensacola, Florida shooting he's film. Shooting 35, he's shooting 35. This guy's shooting Airy BL-16. Oh, nice. Pensacola, cool. I forget who it is. Yeah. I well, I know somebody else shooting 16, too. Our, our old favorite gaffer is shooting 16 mil. He bought himself a Nari. Did he really? 16, yeah. He's shooting a lot of 16 right now. Twinkle Light Fairy? Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, so I, I know quite a few. And Evan's shooting on film right now, too, even though he has an Alexa Mini. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, quite a few people are going back to it. But what I'm finding for most people is people that never experienced film in the first place yeah, are going, are going to back it, yeah. to it now that are trying to expand their horizons and learn how to DP correctly. Yeah. Is no, because there's no thing. forgiveness. Yeah, because I mean, they're certain, because my friend Chris that's doing it right now is doing it to force himself to have to use multiple lights. Yeah. To stuff. Because he was doing the single bulb uh, cues our science lights for all yeah. of his stuff. Yeah. Uh, so he went back to that to try and get better. Uh, it definitely works. But he's also a great... I mean, he's, he's a really fascinating and wonderful DP. Uh, okay. One the more. Yeah, I'm not answering that one. Yeah, we're, we're, we're pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, that's kind of where we are then. I just want to make sure everyone got their Clemson questions answered. Um, that's the show for today. Thanks for joining us. Sorry it was... I, I'm not sorry that it was an Ask Us Almost Anything... Um, because I think those are fun. I think they're relevant. I wish we had more content to show. We're just really bottlenecked with projects, and none of them are out yet. July has been a very insane month. If I showed you the board, you would understand. It's been a pretty crazy month, So, um, and it's going to keep going crazier. Um, anyway, so thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. Do you have anything to say? Good. <laughs> <laughs> what about you?
beard face. No, I mean, that's pretty much it. This is my first one of these. Uh... Oh, yeah, you've never done one. I had to do it solo last time. Yeah, I've never had to do one of these. I like it. Yeah. All right. Well, that's it. Uh, Jeff will uh, keep the chat ski open for a little bit.